Welcome to the long overdue video on Wireshark. Wireshark is considered the de facto tool used for detailed analysis of network data in the PCAP format. In this video, we'll look at Wireshark. This is one of the first GUI-based applications you could use to analyze a PCAP file. Today, we're going to be opening a PCAP file that we saved in our last video. I'll break down the different packet layers that are in that PCAP file, and then I'll show you how we can reassemble TCP streams. So if you go online, you can find a lot of PCAP files. Uh, one of the, uh, the basic websites is from wireshark.org. If you go to wiki.wireshark.org slash sample captures, you'll be able to see a whole lot of different PCAP files people have captured and uploaded and shared with everybody. Uh, anything from different protocols, so you'll be able to find HTTP, PCAP, SMTP, DNS, uh, at TLS, VPN tunnels, IPsec, anything. Uh, there, there are different files that show different flow sizes, so small flows, big flows. Um, and if, if you even follow some of the links, you can find some PCAPs based on uh, some, some live threat hunting or capture the flag exercises or or someone just showing you how to how to do some uh, SQL injection on a website you know you can find good things bad things whatever um, so think about PCAP files uh, how we've talked about the different layers of network traffic and, and the different packets so y if you think about a packet I think you know maximum is typically like a 1500 byte packet so it you know 1500 bytes uh, if you take away the header I don't know let's say you make up 1300 bytes of payload uh, that's that's 1300 characters in ASCII so when you go to a website you can download something like a book right uh, if you think about something like War and Peace, right? It's uh, it's not 1,500 characters long, so you can't fit the whole book in a single packet. Um, so what the computer does is it breaks up the the book, uh, which you know War and Peace is the 3.2 megabytes of uh, data. Um, you know, because it's a, a bajillion page book. So uh, War and Peace gets broken up into, you know, hundreds and thousands of packets. Each of those packets contains different sections of that book. So, you know, 1,500 uh, bytes, I don't know how many words that is. If you say 10, 10 characters per word on average, that's what, 150 words. I don't know if that's a paragraph, a page, something like that. But but the point is, you know, that, that one book gets broken up into a whole bunch of packets. Um, but if you think about a layer seven protocol in an HTTP request, it's a single HTTP GET request. So your client machine makes an HTTP GET request to a web server uh, in one packet because it's small. HTTP requests are small. It says, uh, using the HTTP protocol, get, get me this URL. And, and the URL would be uh, the example down here, www.gutenberg.org slash files 2600 slash 2600 dash zero dot text. TXT. That's going to be the file, the content. So if you use a program like curl, you can do one HTTP request and you'll download it into one file. Uh, but if we monitor that traffic, then you'll see that the the book gets broken up into you know hundreds and hundreds of packets. Um, so there's there's magic on both ends. It says, you know, given file, given the file of 3.2 megabyte size, I know it's gonna take, you know however many packets to send down to the client. And the client knows when it made this HTTP request over this TCP connection that uh, each packet in that TCP connection has a sequence number. Uh, so you get to figure out how to reassemble those packets in order to get the original file. Um, and you could validate all that once you get the file downloaded. You know, your MD5 hashes will match, and, and so you know you got the same file. It just kind of got broken up and reassembled. So yeah, if you've seen uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, you know, the original with Mike TV, when, when it gets kind of broken up and sent over the air from one side of the room to the other, that's exactly what's happening. And hopefully they, the book doesn't end up small, then you'd be missing pages. Uh, um, so let's look at a sample HTTP request over the network. So uh, right now we're still in slides. We'll get to real PCAP soon, but uh, the HTTP request in raw text, in, in raw packet, uh, looks like this on the right side of the slide. It says, uh, I'm going to use HTTP protocol 1.1. I'm issuing a get method 
which is a, a pull, basically a request. So get me this URL slash index dot HTML. The next line says host name of fowey.com. Um, hey, you should totally go to fowey.com slash index dot HTML right now because it's awesome. And so your client makes that request, and, and uh, a HTTP protocol get request always ends in a blank line. So you'll see, you know, it's, it's hard to tell, but there's a blank line there. Uh, and then the response from the server looks like this. It says, uh, okay, I am responding in HTTP 1.1 protocol. I'll give you a 200 okay. 200 is a, is a status. Uh, 200 is, is good. It's an okay status. Uh, something like a 404 status means uh, URL not found, or uh, HTTP 500 means there's an error on the server side. HTTP 401 means unauthorized. You know, there are all kinds. Like in the 300, you get into redirects. Uh, we won't go into those details for the HTTP protocol right here, but that's what it looks like on the wire. So if you reassembled this TCP stream in Wireshark, you'd see these texts, this text. Um, and we're going to do that in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download from my, my packet capture server this output.pcap that we captured last week. We can see that it's about 57K in size. And we're going to use uh, the open command on my... On my um, Mac. So uh, the Mac knows that a .pcap file gets open in Wireshark. So here's Wireshark. We can look at the uh, left-hand side. We'll see the packet numbers. We'll see the time. These are relative time stamps from the beginning. So this first packet number one was captured at zero. And you can see that it's a TCP SYN packet. So this starts a TCP connection to the server. The next two packets are the SYNAC and the ACK, which is a three-way handshake. And here we're looking at this first packet to see what the, uh, basically what the bottom protocol is. And in this case, you can see the, the uh, highest protocol in the stack is a TCP stack. We can see we're going up the stack from Ethernet addresses to IP addresses uh, to a TCP port. So you'll see our destination port here is port 80, which is our standard HTTP port. So now that we look down those, that SYN packet, the SYN ACK packet, and again the ACK packet, that's our three-way handshake to connect our TCP sessions. It all goes between the same client and the server. And you can see that it uh, starts at the client, goes to the server, and returns back to the client for that three-way handshake. Now we get into our Layer 7 protocol. Here, Wireshark breaks it down to the HTTP protocol because it knows, looking inside the contents of this packet's payload, uh, that it looks like an HTTP request. So you'll see here that we used curl to make that HTTP request to fowey.com. We can open just that packet to look at. So we can look at the the uh, the hex encoded uh, payload of this packet. So you can see the get word. You can see the HTTP word. Uh, this is really useful when you're looking at maybe malware and you need to see what the different bytes are within a payload, within a file that you might be downloading to find out what the instruction set is or something like that that gets embedded into a word file. In this case, though, we're looking and we see that, that response, the HTTP response from the server is that 301 status code. Because uh, you can see the original request was port 80, so it was an HTTP request. And then the server responds with an HTTP status code of 301, saying it moved permanently. Uh, curl typically doesn't care if you move permanently or temporarily, but something like your web browser would cache that it was moved permanently. And here, part of that 301 request is a location uh, attribute. That location attribute tells your client where to go next. So the first request was for www.fowey.com, and the response says, uh, don't go to www.fowey.com, go to just fowey.com over HTTP. Since I was using curl, I didn't have it automatically follow this redirect, so uh, you won't see the packets for the uh, HTTP fowey.com. Uh, but the next payload that we're going to look at is from a second 
HTTP request, but actually an HTTP request, so HTTP over TLS to Fowey.com to get the actual contents of my website. So now we turn around and we make a TLS request to, we can't tell from the, from the packet because it gets encrypted, but we can see we've set up a TLS handshake here. So there, we're not going to get into the details of how uh, TLS works, but this is a, the, the certificate negotiation, the protocol negotiation, so the, the client and the server know how to um, share their uh, encryption information. So here you can see all the, the uh, encrypted handshake message and, and then and whatnot below that. Um, you can find information in here about the server and so so this is one of the in my mind a fundamental flaw with tls is that based on the uh, tls handshake you can see what what domain essentially the the servers for but here now that we you know we're going to ignore some of the details but here look at the uh, original http request so within wireshark we can follow the TCP stream and we can say look the the client said get http 1 1 and the server responded in one packet, the HTTP 301 redirect. So the body at the, bo at the bottom of that request is not really necessary, but if you go to your web browser and you see that for a second, uh, it's kind of the friendly message. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, so then we can look at the second TCP string stream since we count starting at zero. Well, again, we'll go to Analyze, follow the TCP stream, and here you'll see the client data saying, ooh, look, I'm trying to do fowey.com. And then you can see the certificate information coming back. In this case, you can see that it was given by Let's Encrypt for fowey.com. And then below that, it's a whole bunch of encrypted data that, uh, by design, we don't know what the heck it means. Now, Wireshark does have the ability to import server certs, so you could actually decode this. Um, but the cool thing here that we talked about earlier is uh, we're, we're serving up four client packets and 20 server packets. So you know there's more in there than just a couple of words of text. There's actually the payload, or I'm sorry, there's, there's actually the certificate that gets returned, and then whatever the... The root certificate, the, the certificate authority information is, and then the HTML contents that was returned and that your browser can decode. So that, in this case, it was the contents of Fowey.com. So now that we've gone through how the, the interface for Wireshark works, we know that we can open a PCAP file and kind of dig into it. Uh, as time goes on, we're going to talk about more protocols, uh, SMTP, SSL, TLS, uh, SSH, and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to show you all of them in Wireshark yet. Uh, as time goes on, I can keep adding some small tutorial videos at Fowey.com to show different protocols uh, with, in more of a, a quick walkthrough. Um, but after this video, we are going to start getting into Suricata. And I am super duper excited about that because this is what it's all coming back to. Uh, we need to have software monitoring a network live that can output our data. So come back soon. Sign up at Fowey.com. Leave some feedback at YouTube. Leave some feedback for my blog and podcast and iTunes. I'd be super excited about that. Uh, sign up on my blog at Fowey.com so I can get you information when new videos come out, new courses come out, and new blog posts. Thank you very much for watching.